And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at a brand new game, Teotihuacan. All right, I tried. I listened to the pronunciation for several times. I'll get it eventually. But this is a game by the same designer of Zulkin, so a lot of people are excited about that. It is a game in which you are building a giant temple, as it shows here in the uh, front of the box. Uh, there are going to be moving dice around, taking different actions, and trying to get points in various ways. But exactly how do you do that? Let's take a look. In this game, players are going to be setting up the board. The board is going to be different depending on if it's two, three, or four players. But players can really kind of customize or randomize the board. See, there's these big spaces on the board that you also have these boards that you can place and cover those up. And so you kind of can randomize the starting spots of six of these eight places on the board. And then on those places, for example, this is over here, kind of a technology spot. You can randomize those and have different technologies on that spot. You have a bunch of these gray tiles are going to be put out in, different, in these gray spots on the board. And so there's, you know, there's going to be a lot of variety from one turn to the next. In the middle is where you're going to be building the pyramid, and players are attempting to get the most points after three eclipses, which is going to be measured by moving this white piece down here. When it hits the black piece, the black piece will move up one, the white one is reset, and it will come down again. And at the end of each of those turns, players are going to be scoring points. They're going to be scoring points for how far up on this track they are. That's going to be multiplied by whatever number is down here. The more houses that are built, the number that it's being multiplied is going to be less. So moving up on that track is useful more so at the beginning of the game. As players build on this as they build different pyramid pieces, they'll be moving on this track down here, and whoever builds the most is going to get points, and whoever builds, and you're also going to get a point for basically how many different pieces that you've built, depending on what round it is. There are many other ways to get victory points over the course of the game. On a player's turn, they're going to pick one of their dice, and players are going to have these dice scattered around the board. Uh, the way this game works is, at the beginning, you are going to choose your starting resources and starting locations by drawing four tiles, and these four tiles, you'll pick two of them, and this will be the stuff that you start with. So maybe I pick these two. I get to start, on, I have a free technology. I start one space up on the blue temple track. I get four stone, two cocoa, two gold, and of these four numbers, my dice are gonna start on three of them. And so that's how every player is gonna start. On your turn, you'll pick one of your dice and you can move it one, two, or three in a clockwise direction. So this red die for here, for example, could move two. When you land on a spot, you have a few choices. First of all, you can take cocoa. Uh, cocoa is a currency that's used in this game, and the amount of cocoa you get is one, plus the number of different colors that were there when you arrived. So you could get a lot of cocoa if there's a lot of different dice there. And even if you're playing with less than four players, there will be some neutral dice that are randomly placed on a board so that you can do that. Another thing you can do is you can use a temple space. Uh, so each, there are different temples that are on the board. This is a multicolored temple over here. There is a red temple here. And when you land on these space, you can lock your die, which means that die can no longer move. And then you can move up one on the red temple track, or you can take this gray tile, or you can pay a cocoa to do both. Uh, on a player's turn, instead of moving a die, they can choose to unlock all their dice, or you can just always pay three cocoa to lock your dice. Many things like those temples are going to let you move up on these tracks here. As you move up on these tracks, this one's going to give you cocoa, this one's going to give you victory points, this one's going to give you resources of your choice. When you hit a pile of these gray tiles, you'll be able to sort through these tiles and take one. Some of the tiles are obvious things that you will get. Like uh, this one here, this gives two resources your choice. This lets you move up on a red one. This one you have to pay one win when you get it, but it's worth four victory points. Some of them are masks, and the number of different masks that you have each equip will give you more points. So the more different masks that you have, you can get a whole pile of points that way. 
If you move all the way up to the top of these tracks, there's also some bonus points that will score at the end of the game. And like everything else, these can be changed. There's tiles to place on top of those. So when you're moving your die around the board, you can take Coco, you can go to one of the temples. And by the way, there's three temples over here. Some of these get victory points and those will be changed uh, based on, you know, you can mess with those also. Or you can take the action of the space. Now, when you take the action of a space, you are going to first have to pay Coco equal to the number of colors that are at that space when you arrive. Then you take the action of that space based on the number of dice that you have there. And in many cases, what the number that's on those dice are. So let's say black moves another die in here. So now he has two dice. He takes a look at his lowest die, which is a one. So two dice, one gives him one wood. That's not a lot, but it's also going to let him upgrade one of his dice to a two. So now he has a two coming around. So later on, let's say maybe this die showed up and it was a five. A five and a two, two dice, and the lowest one is two, would get him two woods. So you can see you can get some pretty good benefits. This particular space gives you a lot of wood. And then there are two more of these spaces. This one, which is upside down, is about giving you stone. And the one over here gives you gold. So there's spots to get these three resources. You're going to be using these resources in different uh, areas. On this particular space here, uh, which, here I'll tilt it, I'll use the mobile board to show you a little bit more of what it's like. You're going to be using, the more dice you have, you're going to be able to build a house. You have to pay two wood to build a house, and you'll pull that house off this board here, placing it on this board, and getting the number of points that you place it on, depending on the number of dice. And of course, your dice will upgrade. If you're using three dice, two of them get to upgrade. Uh, another thing you can do is you can build the temple. Building the temple is going to be done at this spot down here. And you can build one, two, or three pieces. Depending on what level of the temple you're going to build, it costs different resources and gives different amounts of points. You'll pick one of the three available building tiles and place it in an available spot. As you can see, as spots get filled in, the next level will be able to start being built. This is built kind of like a pyramid thing. So if I want to build in the third level, there's going to be... see third level would go here etc when you place these tiles uh, the symbols on the matter each symbol that you match when you place tiles is going to get you extra points and if you match a symbol and the symbol on top is a color then you'll also move up one on that track this spot here it lets you put out decoration tiles and these decoration tiles are going to be placed on the board, the first one's placed here, the next one that is placed is placed here, and you're gonna put them on all four sides. And they will also get you points for each matching symbol, but they have a much better chance of upgrading you on those temple tracks. And finally, there's a tech track over here. The tech track, uh, when you go there, you'll be paying uh, gold to take a tech, and each tech will give you different things. Like this tech here says, whenever I take actions five or six, I get three points. This says, whenever I build something, I get to build an extra one. And so each of these techs are useful, and so you want to put them on there. But if someone else already has their token on a tech, then that person's going to get points when you decide to take that tech also. So that's pretty much it. You're going to keep going around. Now, if you ever upgrade your die to level six, well, they die which is okay because you get them right back as a level one in a temple and you move up one on this track over here. You also move up in a track every time you build a building, but then you also get a benefit. You pick one of the benefits here. And so one of the benefits might be taking a fourth diet. That's a level three and two cocoa. Or you can take uh, cocoa or you can take points or you can move up on one track for free or move up on two tracks at the cost of three cocoa. And every time a die ascends, this moves down one. And every time uh, it comes past the first player's turn, this is gonna move down one. And so once we move the black one, we have an eclipse. At this point, we'll be scoring for how many temple tiles you built, how far up on the different tracks you are. Uh, you also get points for the number of different masks you have. And of course, because this is a Euro game, you have to pay a certain amount of cocoa, depending on how many workers you have or you lose points. After the third eclipse, there's that same kind of scoring with a little bit of extra scoring done but if you've reached the top of these tracks up here. And whoever has the most points is the winner.
Now, the number of pieces in this game can actually be overwhelming at first, but it's not that bad. And these boards are nice, although for me, when these boards are placed on top of the boards that are on the board, and then you're putting other pieces on top of them, it does look a little more cluttered. Uh, but if you want that extra randomness, it's there. These tiles here in the middle are nice wooden tiles. They look really nice and cool. I like that some of them are, are full of colors and it's neat to see the pyramid take shape if you end up building the pyramid. The dice are high quality and the components are a little lackluster. I mean, they're your typical stone, wood, and gold, and the cocoa, which is used the most. Wasn't a huge fan of how that looked, just a bunch of tokens. But that's, I mean, I'm starting to nitpick now. Again, though, when you look at this board for the first time, it's like, wow, look at all that. But it really isn't that confusing. You have your score on the outside of the track and the text, and you might have to look up in the book what everything does. The rule book does have a section here where it's going to explain what all the different discovery technology, royal tiles, and starting tiles do, but they're not that difficult. Honestly, once you teach the game, it makes pretty much sense. You can also play, there's also some components included in the game that will play an uh, opponent for you if you want to play solitaire, so that's included also. So essentially, this game board here is a giant rondelle. Uh, in which you're going to be moving stuff around. You can move one to three spaces and then taking an action where you put the dice. So there's some pretty interesting aspects here. First of all, it's a gigantic rondelle. And the level of variety in this game is huge. Uh, now, granted, I've only played with the variety once for the most part. I think I'm happy with the board as is. I guess maybe if I played it 20 times, then at that point you would say, okay, it matters. Uh, that I, I don't want these. I want these spaces in different orders. I've changed up the text for sure. I've changed up the uh, spots, uh, the, the different temples that you can be locked into. Yeah, I want to change those from game to game. But the spaces where they are on the board themselves. I'm pretty happy because, like I said, it starts feeling a little more cluttered once you do that more variety. But if you like that variety, it's definitely here. I like the visual aspect of the game as you're building that temple. It looks really cool. Although I've played a couple games where the temple wasn't built as much because we were concentrating on other things. One of the unique things about this game is the locking mechanism. So the moving the dice around and upgrading the die and having better actions based on the number of dice and the numbers on those dice Nice idea. It works really well, especially when you mix it with some text. A text says every time you go here, you get an extra food and a point, or maybe you get an extra food and a point and a resource. And now, you know, and then you have a four moving around, and then you're upgrading it until you get to the six, and then you get some cool bonus. That's a neat. I really like that concept. Uh, but I also like the concept that you can go to a temple and get locked in there. Getting those temple tiles or, and moving up on the temple tracks and those tiles, you can get a lot that way. But it does slow you down a little bit because you're going to have to hunt down some cocoa uh, to pay for getting them out or spend a turn doing nothing. And that's kind of a very anticlimactic turn. You're like, I guess I'll just unlock this turn. Also, there is interaction between the players, not a lot, but I'll take things that you want it. I'll be the first one to get the technologies making you to pay. But more importantly, I move my dice and you're sitting there going, oh, that space is really expensive to go on now because all four colors are there and I'm not sure I want to pay that much cocoa. But wait, maybe I don't want to pay the cocoa, but now I can get the five cocoa from landing there. So there's always a lot of things to do in your turn, but I never felt like the choices were overwhelming. You have three dice soon to be four, uh, although I've seen someone win without ever buying their fourth die. I will always buy it though because I just like having more dice in the board. But you have these dice and they can go to different spots. So you're essentially saying, what action do I want to take? I want stone. Can I get one of my dice to stone? Yeah, but it's not that good. All right, how about gold? Ooh, I already have a die on gold. If I move another one there, I have two dice, I'll get better stuff. So it's things like that. It's that concept of continuing to upgrade, continuing to maneuver your dice around the board, and the game doesn't overstay its welcome. It's about a 90-minute game, maybe two hours, and it scales well. I played it with all, well, two, three, and four player counts, and um, yeah, the, the theme is not super strong, but it's pretty good as you're building this temple and building the decorations, and you have different things. Do you want to go for the masks? and move up on them, you know, get a bunch of masks so that you score a pile of points at the end of each eclipse. Do you want to build that temple up? Building the temple is worth a lot of points. Or do you want to just get points by shooting up on those three different color temple tracks? There are going to be some similarities to other games, you know, like the tracks and things are Zulkin. And 
I really dislike that the feed your people thing seems to be shoehorned in this game. I'm getting tired of that mechanism in general. But that's really the only negative thing I'll say about this. I think it, overall the game looks fantastic. It plays fantastic. It's not overwhelming. Offers a lot of choices and was extremely fun. Highly recommend it. Teotihuacan, City of the Gods. Dice Tower Judgment approved.